It's actually chilly in Arizona, which is nice. I'm wearing all this warm clothing this morning. I wanted to talk about war and other happy subjects. War and rage and suppression. Sound like fun? So, why do we have war? One of the things I said for fun, so a soul shock therapy. Soul shock therapy gets us to pay attention. That's an outrageous statement. Little Richard and Elvis and Ozzy and Metallica and a slew of other bands have helped to prevent World War III. That's an outrageous statement. But let's deconstruct it just a little bit. How does the energy work? How does energy work on the planet? We have energies inside us. You get boiling mad with rage. You get flushed and angry. That heat just flashes up inside you. Actually flush hot, you know? Or you go cold with fear, right? These are energies. <clears throat> so our emotional energies are, of course, actual energies. And more subtle than that, just like a blueprint, a blueprint, and pretty soon we're going to have 3D blueprints like in Star Wars, you know, like a hologram, the architect will go, here's your house, and it'll pop up out of the computer in three dimensions. Well, our three-dimensional blueprints for our feelings and our energy is obviously more powerful because it's the seed idea. Seeds are incredibly powerful because they can grow big trees or you know, amazing things. So seed ideas are seed energies. Seed consciousness is more powerful even than the energies themselves. So when we have, whenever you have an emotional energy or, or a seed energy sitting inside you and it's there dormant, it's still doing something. That, that is, energy is still doing something. Here's the example I was using. Um, I'm going to turn to Bruce Lee for a minute. Be like water. You must become the water. <laughs> Bruce Lee. God bless him. What an assignment he had, you know? To go inside the ultimate warrior worlds, martial arts, and try to liquefy them, try to undo the rigidities and the secrecies of them. Maybe he died. Naturally, he was done. Maybe he got killed. Who knows? We can, you can talk to him. Ask him directly. So, what happens to our suppressed rage? Our suppressed rage. When we have this anger inside us that's not allowed to find its natural level, you know, you let bubbles go in water, they find the surface because that's where air wants to be, right? If you have various buoyancies on some objects, certain fish, they have their lung bladder that sets it up so that they're perfectly buoyant at certain depths. Things are supposed to be at their correct right level. Anger has its place. Of course it has its place at the round table of emotions. You know, we suppress a part of us at a very real danger. You've heard me said before, it's like a wolf biting off his paw to get free from a trap. We felt trapped in physicality. But we're certainly hobbled if we say, I am above ever feeling any anger. I simply do not feel it anymore. I am way too enlightened. Right? And if we actually have rage and anger stuck in us, then you are biting off a piece of your emotional body, crippling and hobbling yourself. Real awakening enlightenment allows for the flow through of natural emotions. And anger is part of those. Therefore, masters have at times been very angry because it's a natural reaction to a fallen, ridiculous, crazed, cut-off, crashed chakra system worlds. Jesus, Jeshua, got very pissed off. In the temple, he grabbed the whip and took it to the money changers, right? The people that were selling the little doves, selling the lambs to have their throats snapped and cut and their blood drained into the fire. He just couldn't take it anymore. Can we relate to that? I certainly can. He finally said, get the hell. Maybe he used the F word. Now I'm really pushing it. Get that 
out of my father's house, took the whip to them, kicked their tables over. Which, by the way, this seemed to precipitate the real hostilities from the Pharisees and Sadducees, that once he got into the money game, they got rid of him. That might be the real story. So what happens to our rage? Real masters, you'll notice, are interested, are honest about their rage often. Very angry saints have existed. Okay, the peaceful namby pamby. That's that's a false image by religionism to get you to abandon your rage, your true anger, your righteous anger. If you abandon that, you lose your fire. You lose the red ray. The rainbow is the full red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. If you lose the bottom, if you got you know rock and roll without a bass player it ain't happening acoustic yeah it's cute and nice but you don't feel it right so if you lose your base energies your red and orange and yellow you are one crippled human being maybe no better than a brain floating in in, in liquid solution that's not an enjoyable experience i know i go around this subject a lot because it's very important so <clears throat> war is really nothing but an outward manifestation. I get this. Here, here's your energy. You feel righteous anger. Fuck no! This is not correct. We shouldn't be killing 35 million cows a year. Fuck no! We shouldn't be running over the po population, having cars killing animals on the side of the road. That's it, right? We shouldn't be genetically modifying food. We shouldn't be uh, teaching our kids the way we do, right? Suppressing their spirits and putting them in little boxes and all, you must learn mathematics and be little mathematical robots because that will solve the solution and we can compete with the Chinese. That's fucking insane. It's insane, right? So we, the only righteous response to some of our civilization currently is full-on anger and rage. It is not the way it's meant to be. So, now, conscious anger is different than suppressed anger. Suppressed anger, things, you know, an obvious example of it is I drink and I act out and I black out. That's suppressed acting out in denial anger. Now, you don't have to, the drinking is an extreme example. But if you're Jekyll and hiding with your anger and not accepting it consciously, then you're feeding war. Here's how it works, spiritual physics. Here's how it works. You feel rage and anger, you're righteous anger. No, I'm a good girl. I'm a good Christian man. I simply do not let those feelings come up into me. Right? I'm supposed to not feel it. And we push it down. Literally in our kundalini, in our spinal column, it comes up to be expressed, expressed, pressed out, exited. And we don't do it. Push it back down. Right? Suppress, repress it. What happens to it? A spirit is the closest thing to water, right? We baptize with water. Water is the most liquid thing. Water is the most soft thing. You touch it, it is so liquid and soft. It takes the form, like Bruce Lee said, be the water, right? The water takes the form, it is so soft, of whatever you put it in, a glass, a bottle, the carpet, right? It, it just conforms to that form. Spirit also does this. It moves as water. Now, water is very, very soft, but it's incredibly hard. You cannot compress it. If you take a little, little square and fill it completely with water and then try to push in the sides, you can get big machines to do it. It'll give a little... But it holds its ground. It holds its space. Is there a hint there in having boundaries? In you holding your ground as well? You're liquid and soft, right? Gentle as doves. Right? Wise as serpents. Many ways of saying that. If you jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, the water will slap you really hard. Likelihood is you will die. So water is very, very hard and yet the most silky soft thing on the planet. Saint, now, spirit is the same way. If, so if you push water down somewhere, it has to go somewhere. It'll pop out somewhere else. 
You can't compress it, make it smaller. Same with spirit. So when you push down your rage, it pops out the back end of your energetic body, your astral body. It pops out somewhere. You pop, it goes somewhere if you suppress. It goes into the collective and sits there as little ghosts, if you will, or little pieces of energy that then coalesce like a toxic waste dump and manifest in the physical. So war is the collective gathering of our individually suppressed rages. Do we have rage? Yes. Is it the most judged against emotion? Pretty much. The Viking berserkers, where they would take their helmet, throw it off, throw their shield away, grab the sword, get naked, basically rip their breastplates off, grab their sword and go berserk down the line. That's rage. That's rage. Now we're so terrified of it, but there is a right place for it. There is a conscious rage and an unconscious rage. The conscious rage is something that Jesus would do, a master would do. We can do also. And so you don't flip out Jekyll and Hyde while you're doing it, right? <clears throat> but here's the main point today. If you don't deal with your anger, if you don't find, let your anger find its right place, its right balance inside you, right? an actor cannot be an actor unless he can access some anger. There's going to be some roles where they're going to be able to have to access some righteous anger. We've relegated emotions to television, to movies. We've so rejected our own emotions, we have to watch other people act out, fake out emotions in movies. Feel that, right? Because we're so unhealthy. We have an unhealthy model for how to express emotions. So the suppression of our own inner anger and rage manifests as our kids going off and getting killed in wars. World War I, World War II, millions of people killed. Right? So I jokingly say, little Richard, banging on the pots and pans, get out of the kitchen, right? Good golly, Miss Molly, right? He almost got lynched. He had to, you know, put up mascara and pretend to be gay, although I think he's bisexual, he says. But he, that was a safe thing so he wouldn't get lynched by the white boys in Georgia in the 50s, you know? But that got the energy moving. We needed to get our lower chakras, our first chakras, our energetic chakras moving again. Because it's when they're stuck, that's the depression that eventually blows up school shootings, etc., right? That depression actually will explode into the rage, and that's unconscious and dangerous. So our collective suppression of our own anger adds a cupful to the giant, the pool of war and rage that then eventually manifests in giant military budgets and World War III, etc. One of the best things you can do to undo the potential for nuclear bombs coming from Korea, North Korea, or Iran, and the game going down with a nuclear program in Iran. You know, instead of you running, I ran away from my anger, I ran. How about you stop and make a stand? Look at it, feel it. Feel your own anger, consciously, with the presence. Be present with it. Even if you get into big explosions of anger, right then and there, go, God be with me. God knows your anger. Source knows your anger. It's not scared of it. It's not bad. Righteous owning of your anger is incredibly important to clean up the mess, the toxic astral dump mess we have in four, fourth dimensional reality that is precipitating into earth right now, which we did at the end of Atlantis as well. We did the same thing. A lot of it dumped at once and started acting out in the people. All right, hope this makes some sense. Um, if we clean up our personal anger, that's just why masters, by the way, they're not interested in movements, you know, walking in the street. True masters are interested in the individual fixing of the individual because we as the individual effervesce. Our energy affects the reality around us. The 
giant movements like Gandhi did. You know, he wasn't a true yogic master. He had a public movement to do. They have their places, of course. But real awakening teaching usually has to do... Well, it's all real. It's all good. But true a master... It's hard to say this without people thinking I'm putting one above the other. I'm not. It all has its place. But when you're working on, on the energetic, actual changing of human beings... It's not so much about protest movements, it's more about inner work that then translates into healthy expression in the outer world. Clean up your anger, allow your anger to find its rightful place, and you too can prevent forest fires. Only you can prevent <laughs> World War Three. It's true. It's true. Check out um, Awakening Souls and Listening to the Sun, the books on Amazon, if you want some more of these tidbits. And the Inner Body Awakening is the most powerful tool. It's an ancient tool. Shiva created it. Other people have talked about it, Eckhart Tolle. But it, I put it into an MP3, and people are saying they're having wonderful results. About two years ago, I asked Source, what can we really help people to solidify to ground, to get into their bodies, to actually feel spirit instead of just understanding, just knowing with the mind. This is one of them, the inner body awakening. If you want to do a little bit more advanced energy work where you're learning to actually work with your energy, the alchemy energy process. So all we do is alchemy. Alchemy is the only thing that's happening on the planet. Things are changing all the time. Those are my contributions to the larger awakening. All right, thank you, and more later.